What's going on, guys? It's Noisy here, and we are back with another episode of Noisy Talks. Welcome to the channel. It is me, your host, Noisy, Noisy TV. Um, started this series a couple couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, whatever, <clears throat> just to really have raw, authentic talks with my friends, uh, family members, just to, you know, really um, unpack a lot of stuff that we don't talk on a day-to-day -day basis, and I think it's really important that we keep having these talks because it makes us better human beings and it allows us to be more comfortable with who we are and uh, yeah, all that stuff. So today, very special guest with me uh, and we're doing this via Discord and via Zoom, whatever you wanna call it because he's in a whole different state. So if everyone could please welcome my friend, Marky Wontons. Marky Wontons, how are you doing today? All right, all right. Listen, man, I'm doing fantastic. I got to the gym early today, so just so I believe, just so I could be here. <laughs> Literally, that's what's up. Uh, so, a little backstory: me and Marcus, we have been friends for years. Um, I've known him. I first met him, I think, my freshman year or eighth grade year of track, because uh, his school didn't have a, a track, so they would always come to either KR or Springfield High to have their track practice. Um, so that's where we kind of met, and then we just kind of grew our friendship over time. Um, we're both in the, the field of videography, content, photography, content creator. Uh, so we share a lot of similarities off of that. I mean, you can piggyback off of how we met. I don't know uh, how you want to get into that. Was that was pretty much, a, yeah, it was pretty much, it was eighth grade track. I know freshman year, that's when we didn't use KRs anymore. Right. So he, he, he used a, Springfield at that time. Yeah. Well, yeah, we went to uh, Springfield High and then when we couldn't use Springfield High, we went to Northeastern High School because that was like the next, like, closest one. So yeah. either way, we were going, either way, we were going, we're going 20, 20 minutes out and it's Springfield, <laughs> <laughs> and it's Springfield 20 minutes is far. So Bro, that's far for a track practice, but yeah. Right, just for a um, track practice, crazy. But yeah, Bruh, then we, out then we met, outrageous. We met. Um, then we actually like met again the summer before I moved here. It was like four yeah. years ago, and then yeah, one of the best summers of our lives. No, I'm way. not gonna lie. That I think that was like the best summer of my life. I'm not gonna lie. Is that was that was that 2017, 2018? That was, I think it was 2018. No, 19. 2019. Yeah, bro, I mean, I we, mean, were, we were swimming every day. We were doing videos every day. Every like, day, bro, we didn't care, it bro. Just, it was just lit the whole whole just, summer. The whole summer was just amazing. But Marky, welcome. Um, uh, for those who don't watch any of, or not any, but for those who don't, who haven't watched the episode yet of Noisy Talks, uh, the interviewee, they never know what questions I'm going to ask just because I want it to be more raw and authentic. And I want them to answer honestly on the spot because I feel like if you give a person a question and um, they know it beforehand. They know it beforehand. They all they already have like either a an answer or like a a, a disguised answer. And I want it to be like on the spot. Then I know you know what's what's happening. So are you ready? Yes. Six questions for Marky Wansons. Here we go. The first question. Uh, you left your hometown, Springfield, because you know we're both from Springfield. You born and raised in Springfield? Yeah. Okay, born and raised in Springfield. You left Springfield, Ohio. Um, back in twenty what nineteen. Okay, so you left you left your hometown in twenty nineteen, and um, for good reason. You know, obviously you moved to a different location, whatever. But do you feel like you made the right decision by by leaving your hometown? Because a lot of people, you know, they feel that you know they can't leave their hometown because so many people are de are depending on them, or um, they have a lot of friends here, a lot of memories. So, you know. How, how do you feel about uh, leaving your hometown? And was that the right decision uh, that you think you made? Um, actually, for one, I, I just thought about it. It was definitely 2018 because it was. That's what I thought. Tavion, I like, I it was, it was Tavion, and Alexis, Tavion and Alexis' wedding the day right yeah. after that we left. Yeah. Um, so I would say, for one, me personally, uh, the decision wasn't. I knew it was a good decision now, honestly, around like this year. That's now I know now took a decision before I did not know who it was or not because when you move away from all those memories and stuff like that, it's especially at the age that I was, especially after having the summer that I had outside every single day, right. 8 a.m., 8 getting back at, at, at midnight, just 
do it all over again to do mm-hmm. literally whatever we wanted to. Also being 19 at the time. Also um, being only knowing one thing. Um, no, it was not seeming like the best decision like that first year or two. Uh, but then after that, and then actually when COVID hit, actually, because I COVID hit um, during the year when I was turning 21 also. So then I really couldn't even like be outside like that. Like I wanted to for my 21st. I couldn't really like celebrate it, I think, until my birthday is April. So I really didn't celebrate it until like that July after mm-hmm. uh, when everything opened back up here. So honestly, after all that had happened and now that I'm mentally in a better place i can see everything else physical that i've done that has now that now lets me know okay yeah this was a good decision because when i was i guess when i was here doing whatever like whatever it is all to basically build up to what i'm doing now (laughs) um i didn't know if it was or wasn't going to work out so And, and just for the people to know where where are you located exactly charlotte north carolina Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure people knew that, you know, just yeah. case, like, where did he go? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I'm here with my, fam- my mom, my dad, and my brother. He graduated um, a year ago, and he honestly might, he might end up moving back to Ohio, just uh, specifically for jobs. Yeah. But um, that would be the, uh, that would be the main thing, I guess. The only reason I would ever see myself moving back is specifically because of a job like if i get some sort of like something in the creative field that's gonna pay me like the amount i would get yeah, paid yeah. right because i because i feel like i feel like uh and i'm i'm only specifically talking about springfield like a lot of people who who move far away they usually come back and that's something that has always bothered me because and i'm not saying that ohio or springfield specifically doesn't have opportunities but to be realistic it doesn't um but maybe that's just because of how i'm thinking about it uh i don't think it does mostly because of like the stuff that's built or being built in the city so we have a lot more food restaurants but we're in a food desert uh every building is dying down there you know what i mean um the only outlet that we have is a thing called cohatch but cohatch is made for white people so it's like, you know, <laughs> like, you know, what what can black people do to really have a creative outlet? And then, you know, we have uh that thing called the dome. I don't know, have you been to the dome? Yeah. So the dome is like uh where they have um different types of sciences, robotics classes, music classes, all that stuff, but kids use it as a hangout spot rather than a resource. But mm-hmm. it's because like they don't I'm not gonna say the teachers don't teach them, but it's not engaging enough. That's the best way to put it. Yeah, they probably are not engaging a, enough. Yeah, I don't think it's engaging enough. Um, so I think when people decide to come back, I feel like it's more of a I miss home thing rather than trying to trying to grind it out uh, where they're at. And I think especially for Charlotte, you have a way bigger scene with with uh, with um, yeah sports. Yeah, Ev- everything. Uh, Every literally time. everything. Like, I'm about to say literally everything down there. Like you have an outlet for, and I feel like in the position we are in Springfield, Dayton area, I feel like the scene is starting to rise, but people don't take it serious. Like, um, it, No, it, de- it definitely is. And the thing is that people don't realize, I feel like, is um, there's only so much uh, you could, you have to make of it. You know, you have to make something from whatever your situation you're in. There's, right. There really is only so much that you can do. Right. One, one thing that I've really noticed here is like, a lot of people here suck. Like they are not good people at all, but like, like, they are like, real. Like they are so real. Like I will okay, be honest. Okay. They're not good people, but they're also real at the same time. Like what? What, what makes them not good people though? Like I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm gonna be honest. Okay, bro. I'm not gonna lie, bro. There's multiple multitude of times you would just see somebody like I never. I'll never forget this day, bro. I'm sitting on the on the. We call it the light rail. It's basically just a giant like train that goes from the mm-hmm. very top of the Charlotte all the way to the very bottom, right? Nice. Um. And when I first got here, I'm like, oh, bet I could get on here for free. It's not for free. You have to pay for it, but I'm never paying for it. But like, right. I ain't never paying for that. $3? Crazy. Um, $3 for a train ride. For a train ride. You're going 15 Bro, minutes. No. Wild to me. That's not happening. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Um, not but, a dude gave a, but a dude gave a homeless guy two bucks and 50 cents and looked at him and said, why the fuck you give me my change? And threw it at him. 
Throw it at him. <laughs> I was I was rolling the whole time. Bruh. And so I'm like, people, why people just people just mean there. That's all they're not bad people though. I wanna say they're bad people. Yeah, like that's what I said, like there but a lot of times like when you meet people, to be honest, um yeah. if you meet somebody who like actually is is a fairly knowledgeable person, which is a lot of people here. They'll yeah. be like, they'll. I'm gonna be honest. There's been a lot of times I've like talked to somebody about an idea, and they just like, I don't even think that would work. You need to do it like this, and then I would right. go back and like actually think about it. And I'm like, oh, they weren't. Yeah, that kind of sounded me, but I mean, they're not. They're onto something. They're not completely wrong. Yeah, because I I feel like a lot of people, and again, I'm only going off of personal experiences. A lot of people in Ohio, they, or are they are yes men, yes man, yes men. Um, because like there are a lot of people who are or who, who can be creative but mm -hmm. people don't give them the constructive criticism so they'll be like yeah like we support you like you're amazing blah 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 but like when, you, when it's time for you to perform or whatever that doesn't really show to what they're actually doing or what they can do that's, that's um, so true and, and I think and I think that we we lack that in mm -hmm. the place I live um, but going into question number two completely different you know, topic, whatever. Uh, and I feel like as men, we need to talk about this more just because we don't. So question number two, when what was the last time you cried and what was it over? I'm an emotional guy. So honestly, me You're crying right. is not, not me crying is not a, <laughs> Yeah. Like I don't yeah. like I'll be crying like every like you know like every day. But like I think yeah. I cried like like I genuinely cried. Um I say on my twenty like after my front my twenty first birthday during COVID. That's when I say That I was the last time you cried? Yeah. That was the last time you cried? Genuinely, yeah. Three, two years ago? Two years ago. Like, where I would just end tears like that. Okay. And, and what was it over? Um, That was when all the loneliness set in, truly. That's when it was. Mm. Like, in, in, in Charlotte? Yeah. Like, I would just sit okay. in my bed and just bawl my eyes out. Like, I have no... Like, mm. I was thinking, like, dang, is this worth it? Do I have any friends? I don't have any friends. Who can I call? All my friends are outside yeah. right now. Yeah. All my family, like, you know, all my... I don't have friends. I really only have family that I grew up with that we're all still cool with. Uh, today, mm -hmm. so honestly, like they were the only people who I ever wanted to hang out with or anything. So, I think that was the last time, like I genuinely like just let it out. Been, yeah, because there's been other times where it's been like I've been like really like like sad, mm -hmm. like I was just down in the dumps. But I don't think I cried then. Yeah. Okay, like, I understand what you're saying. Like, but. Like then, then the next closest time to something like that was after me and my ex had broke up because she's the one and only girlfriend I ever had. Um, right. Yeah. And I told you we got into a big argument, and it was it was bad. And I remember just mm -hmm. driving home, just like, just like that was like it was, I was like this <laughs> yeah, just, that, just very you know, still. I was just still, and I was just like I got back home and I just laid down. I didn't. Yeah. Even know, I was like, you know what? The fact that this, because I hate arguing. That's the only thing I hate. Yeah, I hate arguing, I do especially too. with somebody I love. I do mm -hmm. not want to argue with you. Like, if we even have like the slightest disagreement, I'm like, no. <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> even like, know what uh, to do. Like, so, and and how, how does that how does that make you feel as a male? Because like you know, a lot of perspectives uh say that you know if men show emotion we're soft or like you know if we cry we're soft like are you are you very comfortable with like you know who you are as a person to show your emotion to let out your emotion in front of people or by yourself oh most definitely i don't because the thing is i feel like people need to process their emotions in a healthy yes. way some people yes. they just a lot of people will say you just got to go work out a lot of people say you just got to suck it up a lot of people say you yeah. just you just have to do this but the thing right. is that i think people should do is there should be no more there is just a way to do something because i always yes. think about it like in a multitude of ways, this is something that the city taught me. There is no one way of anything that's here. There is no way of making money. There is no way of how to get it from point A to point B. There is no one way of of, of anything that's here. You know, so mm -hmm. emotions are literally the exact same as all those other things. 
and, and I feel like away. that has to do a lot with uh, community, and that's something I've been preaching or saying these last few episodes is understanding your community, what you're around, who you're around, uh, what you who you decide to build with, what type of support you decide to have. Like it's all based on on, on community because those people will either guide you or uh, you know basically help you along the way. Um, going to question number three. Uh, again, we're going to keep escalating the questions. Okay. Um, have you ever lost someone and how did that affect you, you know, in today's time or how is that affecting you in today, in today's time in the present? Uh, I have in the one and only person that the person that always comes to mind, um, my cousin, Javon, he, he lives in Michigan. Well, he lived mm -hmm. in, uh, in Michigan and, um, he was like the typical, typical big cousin that didn't like you got like to us, like to, from his perspective to ours, you know, like I now that I've had time to analyze a lot of this stuff that's been happening um, from his perspective to ours was like, oh, my gosh, like my cousins have everything like like they have a, a two story house. They have a backyard. They had they don't have to right. trust them when, you know, he was not in the best situations at all. So whenever we got to visit him, it was always really exciting. But at the same time, it was like. Um, dang, like now I just feel like I have to, I have to big cousin them, you know. So, uh, he's the one who pretty much had taught taught me a lot about anything, like a lot mm -hmm. about just just a lot of character development that happened, I should say, with him. I don't want to say like my full, like a lot of like my full perspectives is from him which it is yeah. like my mantra on life which is his mantra on life which is all about balance that's literally it it doesn't matter how the scale tips but it's just going to tip in some way um and it's all about you having to maintain that balance in some way but right. also understanding how when the scale tips there's just sometimes it just has to and, and, and the it has to is uncontrollable to you so don't worry about it hmm. he, he was very nonchalant about a lot of things um it's because he just didn't something that he couldn't control. He couldn't control it. Yeah, so yeah. Um, he died and, 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 when I was fourteen, and jeez, yeah. Like right during that, I was really texting him. Like we were really texting a lot. So. And then, um, how how is that affecting you in, in today's time, or is it affecting you in today's time? Like, have you have you healed? Have you? Yes. Yeah, so I definitely have healed from it, but what um really i guess what, what really set in and everything like it's not really i guess he yeah, doesn't really affect me but everything sometimes sets in where it's like i know like if some more people that i knew that i had that i had lost mm -hmm. were here right now yeah they'd be like they'd be they oh well, we'd be the happiest people ever i do mm -hmm. think i do think about that sometimes but yeah not like to where to deter in my day or something Mm, Cause I uh, so one thing that I have been very fearful of recently is because I'm one of the few people that I know in my life. <laughs> um, I have I have both sets of grandparents, and um, I know like a lot of people don't uh, have you know their grandparents in their life, or like I haven't had a death in the family at all, like never. I've had. Um, I guess I don't want to say it's a lie, but I've had a great grandma pass away. Um, but as far as like my my dad's side immediate, my mom's side immediate, I've never had a death in family ever. And that's something that scares me because I understand the reality of death and I understand the reality of not creating a relationship with that person before they go. Um, so that's something that I've been kind of uh, pressing more in my life is just because uh, I have about like three, four family group chats and I, you know, like randomly, I just be like, hey, family, love you guys. Hope you guys are doing good. You know, see you soon. Um, just because I, I'm not ready for that step. So I, I guess that question was more for me mm -hmm. because since you have already been through it, I have something that I know I had to prepare myself for. Um, and I'm not there yet at all, but I just know that it's, it's going to get to that point. Just uh, really you know, trying to prepare, my, pre prepare myself for that, but I know I'm not there yet. So it's not something that I'm like really thinking about, or, um, I mean, I guess I do think about it, but I, I just haven't processed it. I get it. Um, 
And then going back to, because I kind of want, I kind of want to answer the questions that I asked you too. So, mm-hmm. like the last time I cried as well was, ooh, I think I was at my family gathering. We went to uh, Hocking Hills for like, you know, like a big family gathering, and I planned on you kind of relaxing, <clears throat> kind of relaxing, um, you know, just taking videos of the family, you know, having a vlog and stuff. But then I really understood like this is the first time anyone in my family has ever been in the same room like and staying overnight together ever um so i became more of a a helper you know you're like hey like are you okay blah blah blah. um and that's something that i know that they appreciate because they know it's coming from a good heart and i just hope and wish that they see how much hard work i'm putting into wanting to keep the family going and you know seeing each other and be more supportive um, because I know like a lot of black households, they're just taught to work and die. And I want them to know that you have a purpose that's, that needs to be fulfilled more than working and dying. That job doesn't own your mind, doesn't own your body, even though it gives a, an income, um, yeah. you can create your income because you, Mar- Marcus is the first person to ever tell me that, um, you can you can create an opportunity by using your gift, but you have to use your gift to create the opportunity. And that, I think that's something that I have been using forever now, because it's like, if I'm going to, if I'm going to do it, I had to create it for me instead of, okay, I'm good at this. Now I have to let people, Hey, would you like to No, I had to go create them myself because then I'm still relying on jobbing. I'm still relying on working. I'm still relying on mm-hmm. instead of relying on myself. Uh, so I just want to cover that up. Um, so we are now on question number four. Uh, yes. You ready for number four? <laughs> yes. Okay. Do you suffer from depression and anxiety? And if you do, what are you doing to help it? Depression, no. Anxiety, definitely. Anxiety okay. comes from. Uh, I get my anxiety. I guess a lot of times just comes from from like all the things that I'm doing in life. Yeah. So like I do a lot of different things. I yeah. taught myself a lot of different things since I've been here. Yeah. And I don't know I never really knew which one I wanted to really sink my teeth into. Yeah. And one thing that I you know, a lot of people always love saying they say, um I say, Oh, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. I want to master of none. Yeah. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I promise Honestly, a jack of all trades, uh, jack of all trades, is the dumbest title I think I've ever wanted to have. Like, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I think it's honestly. I understand you wanting to learn a lot of things. That's fine, but don't. But if you want to learn it, just learn it. Don't try to adapt it like it's a trait, like it's a real thing that you do. Mm-hmm. People, I, when I really realized the way that people make money out here is by finding something and then literally putting your all into it. That is like. I think that has helped the biggest amount of my anxiety because I always felt yeah. like I needed to learn more, like learn a different skill, which yes. I did. I do not did. I still do need to learn different skills, but yeah. that's all I need to do, which is learn it. I don't need yeah. to, I'm, I don't need to be like, okay, I can, cause there's literally just to, just to name things off. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know how to fix the, I know how to put basic furniture and um, assembly stuff together, but I don't mm-hmm. need to master how to build, right. so how to actually build something. I just learned how to do it and I can do slight carpentry work now. I yes. learned I learned how to put things into my car. That's all I needed to learn. I just needed to learn how to fix my car to help me save money. That's all. And then just stay there. So yeah. I can do, you know, simple <clears throat> stuff like a, a changing a tire, like t- your like your lights. I change the um window switches in it in the motor, like little things like that. Um I just learned how to do it. I do with photography in the entire photography realm, well, photography, video, and film realm. I wanted to learn every type of photography. I didn't need to learn every type. I just need to learn right. the types that are just for me. Then that's right. where the biggest one came from. I right. didn't need to learn how I if I didn't need to learn how to do landscape photography. I did not need to learn how to do um, our, uh, architectural photography. I didn't need to learn how to only do portraits for weddings, events, whatever like that, right? I didn't yeah. need to learn how to do all that stuff. What I needed to learn was my type of photography that I wanted to sink my teeth into and then go all into it. And that's when I yeah. found, like I found doing real estate photography is specifically for money, which is perfectly fine. Like if you want to do something, I said, if I'm going to start <laughs> making money, I said, if I'm going to make money, it's going to be from one of my gifts. 
and right. I found it. So that was where I, um, I guess like I didn't like for me wise for my anxiety, um, where I'm like, okay, like now that I'm, I'm knowing now where I can put my focus into it's, it's been helping a ton. Yeah. Um, so I have to challenge your thinking a little bit. Uh, so how do I, want, where do I want to start? So let me start with, this that's, is more of a self and, and, that, and by the way, this is not, not anything new for us at all. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, this is not yeah. a new thing. Like, when he said that, I'm just like, uh, oh, uh, oh, so this is literally it's any other regular talk we have. No, yeah, no. I, I have to challenge your thinking a little bit. So um, first off, let me say that I personally have always thought that anxiety was something that's made up, okay? Like, in your head. So let me let me elaborate on that for anyone who's sensitive out there. <laughs> The way I the way I view anxiety is like when you walk into a room and you feel a lot or you see a lot of people around you, then your heart starts beating because you're not used to being around that many that uh, you know that many people. Right. If you actually really look around and see that no one is paying attention to you, why why like why why does that why does that make you isolate yourself? Like oh my gosh, I'm in a room, I got a blah 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 blah. Like I feel like that's a lot of stuff that that comes with insecurity. Um, and then going into how you felt like the pressure of, of, you know, Jack of all trades, master of none, I still think that's something that you just never had the guidance for. So I feel like guidance cures anxiety because when you're all alone, then you're, your mind tries to play tricks on you. Like, Oh, I have to get, uh, yeah, yeah. But like you said, if you're just taught by someone or if you're just talking to someone, it's, it goes away. So that's why I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say that it's not real, but I think it's more of a, yeah. it's more of an in your head thing and insecurity than it, than it is actual whatever. Um, right. So that's one thing Two. As far as the jack of all trades, master of none, when people say hone in on one thing and go after it, I completely disagree. Just because I feel like it all comes down to time management. So if you know that you're good at all these things and you have the gifts to do all these things, you have to make the time to not perfect each craft, but to practice each craft. Um, so for example, things that I'm good at are music, content creation, um, so let's just say those two, cause those, cause those can go very broad. Yeah. Uh, so one thing that I became a fear of was trying to do everything all at once. Right. But then when I actually broke it down to doing everything, uh, at a certain amount of time for a certain amount of time, my production, my creation became, you know, it, it rose basically. Uh, just because I took the, the specific time to work on that thing. And I think when you hone when you hone in on one thing and then let everything else follow, I feel like you'll lose touch of everything else. You are the like a lot of people will not know these things. But you I said a lot of times you are the only person who really knows really How what's like, going on. Yeah, like, like, I, like, I like don't in your in your brain, in your brain. Because I don't I do not want to talk about it with everybody because Bro, that means that means a lot actually, because I feel like a lot of people can just talk to me, and I feel I feel good knowing that because I don't I don't want to be an escape, but I do want to inspire just conversation because we need to talk. Like, there's no way, no one, and this is this is just a little a little interlude, even though this is not music. But like, I feel like a lot of people just need to talk to each other. Like, whatever problem you have, whatever whatever, talk to a really trustworthy friend and just talk it out. Let them challenge your mind. Let you challenge their mind, and just keep moving forward. That's the only way we can grow as people. Um, okay. So, question number five: Did you did you finish college? Are you still in college? Mm -mm. Did you drop out? I dropped out. Okay, good. This is the next question. In the in the black community, okay, uh, being a first generation, you know, for college means a lot. It means like you basically made it. You know what I mean? Um, because no one else did it. No one else wanted to go through it. Uh, do you ever feel that pressure to go back to school and finish school? Oh, most definitely. I'm in a household with a math major, my brother, who graduated at the top of his class in math. My parents who both had master's degrees, three degrees each. 
Three, I like Jesus. To say. Every Jesus. and what am I doing? Having a camera with a nice big spin PC <laughs> that lights up with what with colorful lights in my wall, bro. What? Of course I want to go back sometimes. Of uh, course yeah. I do. There's there's yeah. not a lot of time when I when I don't. And this is speaking to all these. Every, by the way, everything that we've been talking about is literally pertaining to me as an individual. Yes. Um, and my personal experiences that I have seen. And none of this is I is saying follow my advice none of this is ever saying i have the right way the only thing i will say if you ever want to take anything i ever say is just understand there is not one way of anything that's it yes but, um i'm not gonna lie when my brother walked in the house when he when we, i went to pick him up from the airport after he got this degree i was so happy for that man i like i was like that's my big brother right there he did that because my but, 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 but on the flip side, did that make you feel some type of way? Because it's like, oh, man, yeah, like you're holding a de- you're holding a degree, and I'm not. No, in my, I, my I, parents. I didn't until now, until it, <laughs> until he started getting it, until he got a job. And then I'm, not, I'm over here like I'm I'm about to sabotage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, no, yeah. I'm not, I would never do that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. no, that but really on that on that flip side, it was like, do I need to like is college away from me right now? But then. At the same time, I think of uh, everything that I've learned. And I will say, education is elevation. Knowledge is power. Elevation is a level you have never seen before. Power to persuade, pursue whatever path you choose. Mm -hmm. Um, And I will never, ever tell somebody not to go into higher education. Only only thing that I do want to say to it is if you don't know what you want to do, just don't go into it yet. Because... Because I, I, I feel I don't I don't agree with college just because I mean I had this on a previous conversation with uh with Nico, um Nico Jones, the the guy, uh, um basically talking about like how college and school in general is only one way of learning, so you get one answer to one to one question to you know what I mean, and I feel like when it comes to the education. And that, that's why I feel like when it goes on to like, you know, beyond honing into whatever, the more the more you know about different things, it, it, it could apply to your primary, but that primary helps you with other, with other things. Uh, last question of today's talk. Um, do you think that you take care of Marcus well? Oh, wow, that's a deep question. Um, yeah. Do I take care of Marcus? Let's see. Like. Like, like, do you really think you take a good care of yourself? And and, th- and this can go along the lines of of, of grooming yourself, of yeah, under, like, understanding your your mental awareness. Uh, do you think you take good care of yourself? I would say, I don't think that I honestly that I could say that I do. Um, Wow, I don't. Let's be, let's be honest. Come on now, let's be honest. Because when I really sit and think about it, um, I went to the gym this morning, but I probably won't go tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably not waking up and go tomorrow. Right. Um, I do my own. I I am in a path right now to where I'm re- I'm genuinely happy, but. Now, the path I'm on is my full deterrent to my happiness. Mm. Um, and, and repeat that one more time, just because you know some people might not hear that for real. So repeat that one more time. Listen, oh my gosh, bro! If you if you want to post anything, I love the path I'm on, but it's the deterrent to my happiness. It's the best and worst thing for your mental health. No lie, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. literally, some I'm not gonna lie, like. There's sometimes in my YouTube videos or TikToks when I don't see the numbers where I feel like they should be. I'm and that's some, that's something I'm going to mm, keep going. Keep going. Keep I'm going. pretty upset about. But mm-hmm. um, I can't say that I do because I feel like I've lost that 20. <laughs> not going to lie. I feel like I lost that 2018 kid feeling that's inside of me and I don't mm-hmm. feed the kid in me enough. Mm-hmm. And I think overall, mm-hmm. that's what I could. Uh, that's what I'll say. If I fed the kid in me more. Then I feel like I can say I'm taking care of me more because that's a very big thing to do when I'm taking because, care of myself. Because, because you you cared more then because like you really don't care more now. Yeah, like honestly, honestly and truly, mm. I had I had a routine. I was we worked out. We were at well, we were in um Clark State's gym. 
We all live. day, yeah. Bro. We, to we work out. Yes. I had a job that I was I work I was working at the Springfield Country Club at the time, so I had a job that gave me free food, so I was saving money on food. Um, my it was literally uh, a seven minute drive to my job. I was saving money on gas. I was getting at the time I was getting like four hundred dollars a week. I'm great with that, so I could do whatever. Um, I was about to move to a new city, so I'm like I'm living it up. But I was feeding the kid in me. I would literally yeah. have a regular. I would like have a regular routine like my routine literally never pretty much changed though it'd be waking up at like set like eight and then you know shower or work out whatever we decide to do and then come home if i go to work then go to work then i'd come home shower again and you know doing my hair every day and yeah. mm -hmm. keeping myself like uh, like going. active and i'm going yeah, you're going but now it's like unless i'm going unless i'm making money i'm right here in this chair and and what what makes you not go anymore i mean because of like you not wanting to be active like like what makes you not want to go anymore i feel like it just generally be like I, again generally because now my happiness is all if i don't have enough like if i don't feel like i'm going towards um i'm not going towards right i'm not getting the results that i i should be getting i should say yeah that's, but that's it, what it so is so i i do have to challenge that because I, first of all i am the same way so let me say that right now but the the flip side of that is People, and I'm sure you've gotten one of these, but people will go out their way to message me, be like, hey, Zion, I've watched your your talks with your friends, and it really has helped me to want to, to be more involved with my friends because I feel like my friends don't know me. That makes me feel so much better because, like, even though I don't, you know, because we see social media, we see the numbers that people are doing, but they really had to get that over time. Like, we haven't. We haven't grinded a, a, enough, is what I should say. No, the the top yeah. the top one percenters of YouTube have been doing YouTube besides Mr. No, even Mr. Beast for ten plus ten years. years. Ten yeah, years. Yeah, ten years. And I've been doing it so, for three. So like, yeah, I don't need to be thinking like that. But sometimes, yeah, I but, still... but it, it's, it's just because of the numbers that we see. But yeah. I think if you, if you look at more the personal, like you know, people who give you a like, people who do share your stuff, people who do view your stuff, I feel like that's more of a result in itself because like you know, a lot not a lot of people. You know, so like if, if let's say let's say we post a let's say we post an Instagram picture together and it gets or if you post an Instagram picture yourself and it gets twenty likes in your head twenty likes is not is nothing but if you get twenty compliments in one day that's a lot that's of a lot no that's bro. a and that's like really what I've been gearing my brain to think like which is very it, I've noticed it's been very difficult to do yeah because I feel like I've thought one way for. A ever. lot forever, and it's like yeah, I'm still going through so much development myself, and to, that's to, why to, to really get to a place where you do understand, right? Yourself. Yeah, and that's why, yeah, that's why I say I, I that's why I love <clears> to, I guess, like have talks like these, even because this is like little, like literally little things like this always get me like rethinking. And I even like now, I even have, um, like my inspirational quotes, my goals, and stuff like that. I just wrote it down on a piece of paper and I just uh tape it to my wall, yeah. so little things like this are like really helping me like gear back into the into the mindset of hey this is um you just got you really just got it like you're not in a position to even honestly be stressed over mm -hmm. any of these things when you have honestly truly not even grinded like the people who inspire you every day like yeah so so be before before we get off I, I do have to say let's collectively as friends do better of grooming ourselves and actually taking you know not I'm not gonna say taking showers because I'm I'm a clean no, person. No, I'm no, I'm clean and everything. It's just like but back like, then no, I was, just, bro. Yeah. Back then I was like obviously picking Chris, my bro. Bro, yeah, I was it was Chris, it was Chris. Bro. Like I didn't like, yeah, didn't, so. like now like I'm in the chair all day. So yeah. I'll get up and take a shower, do my hair in the morning, and that's it. Before I would yeah. really do my I would do my hair in the morning and after work. <laughs> like, let's 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 do a better job of of taking care of ourselves because we are the only people we have in in our body. So let, let's start taking care of ourselves together. This is the space where you are able to ask any question in the world. Only one question because, you know, it could be longer. So go ahead. Okay. Um, if you could, if you could, if you had to take away, right, one single thing in your life to gain a sink to gain one of your highest goals what would that thing what would that thing be but you only have but if of the four but have it yeah four things so somebody asked me this exact question of your four highest priorities in your life if you were to be able to take one away to gain the highest priority of it 
to gain like whatever like whatever it is you said okay this is the end result to gain it mm -hmm. which one do you think it would be so if i had to take away so then you have one, to have four, one yeah, of the four yeah you have like whatever for four. so for one thing all four of your highest priorities in your life the thing to go it could be literally anything like say this the, this this can is the highest priority in my life and then also me wanting to hit a million subscribers and also say my family and then also say money those are my four highest things right okay so then, so l l let me let me name my four highest my four highest is relationship with god uh hitting a million subscribers being able to to travel with music and being able to travel with um video and content creation in, in general mm -hmm. um I would actually take away video content creation just because I feel like for one, I don't have a great relationship with God, but I want a, a better relationship. And that's something I had to develop myself. Family, I'm always going to want family to be there. And I rather would travel with music because that's something I enjoy doing more than content creation, just because it's more natural to me. Um, I'm not saying that none, like neither are natural or more, one more natural than the other, but I, I could do it for hours and not feel exhausted. Okay. Rather than with video, it's like you have to keep your your shoulders up and smile and all that stuff. But with music, I can just close my eyes and be in a whole different area. That's my answer. If that answers it at all, is that is that is that a good answer? It, it is, but it isn't. Why? Why is it? No, we're not about to do this. All right, Marcus. Uh, I appreciate you for being on the channel today. <laughs> That's not an acceptable answer for me. Yeah, but we'll make an acceptable bro, answer yeah, for the bro, video. Bro, okay. Bro, yeah, That's yeah. an acceptable uh, answer for the video. Yes. Okay. All right, Marcus. I appreciate you for being on today. Uh, hopefully, we can you know make some stuff in the future because you're in a different state. But I plan on do. I plan on coming down there sometime or whenever you come back, we can we can hang out. But Marcus, say your goodbyes. Hey, it's been the young Marcus Wontons, man. And his, his stuff will be in the description below. So make sure you click that link. Go get him some subs. Uh, other than that, it's Noisy and Marky Wontons. We are out.